Land Rovers have always been known for their off-roading abilities. The Freelander 2 has been around since 2006, and now it's getting a facelift. We put the revamped SUV through its paces on difficult terrain. Our first assignment is coming down a mountain. Our instructor, Peter Sekulich, says we'll be using a special hill descent control feature. We choose the gear, and that controls the speed of our descent. The hill descent control guides us down the hill easily. He says he doesn't have to do anything but make sure the car is pointed in the right direction. Off-roading enthusiasts shouldn't skip the all-wheel drive option. However, there is a front-wheel drive version as well. There's also a choice of four engines. We tested the TD4, an inline four-cylinder diesel that's good for 177 kilowatts and 340 newton meters of torque. It gets the Freelander to 108.8 seconds and tops out at 200 kilometers per hour. It's not exactly thrifty at the pump, though. It consumes 9.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Unevenly angled surfaces are no problem for the Freelander. A new option is a position indicator for the front wheels. Peter says that there's an indicator in the display that shows the status of the front wheels. That can help a lot in off-road situations when the driver does a lot of steering around obstacles. He says it's also important for steep descents. We took the Freelander to an old quarry in the town of Wolfrat, near Dusseldorf. It's the perfect setting for an off-road test, with a choice of difficult grades and surfaces to evaluate the car. There's this sand heap, for instance, an obstacle that would strand any normal car. And here, says Peter, is a passage that helps simulate a dry riverbed. Drivers have to be constantly on the lookout for rocks. That's a challenge. They have to drive carefully to avoid a puncture. He says giving the car some gas will help. And now we've made it. The Freelander owes its special capabilities to the Terrain Response System, a control network that allows the choice of four driving settings. Drivers can choose between normal, a setting for grass and snow, one for mud and ruts, and one for sand. Even water can't stop the Freelander. That said, the Freelander isn't a purebred off-roader. Rather, it's a modern SUV. Uh, the Freelander can't do everything, says Peter. Compared to the Discovery model, for instance, there's no low gearing and a bit less ground clearance. That's why these stairs are the end of the road for the Freelander. We'll get to the styling shortly, but first we need to get this dirt out of the way. The Freelander 2 has an elegant exterior with new LED headlamps. There's also a new four-cylinder gas engine model. Land Rover's Christian Ulrich says that the whole engine is made out of aluminum. That allows for a savings of 40 kilos and helps reduce fuel consumption by 12 percent. The car now emits 224 grams of CO2 per kilometer, with higher power output than before, up to 240 horsepower, or 177 kilowatts. In the styling department, the flanks are not as brawny as they were. Soft edges contribute to a more rounded impression. The rear sports new LED lights as well. The interior offers all the usual comfort items and is outfitted in robust materials. The dashboard features a large touchscreen display. The seats aren't leather, but they're still quite comfortable for driving. 
and there's plenty of space in the back seat. The new Freelander 2 cuts a fine figure in town as well as off-road. It is set to appear in German showrooms in 2013, starting at 28,200 euros.